Hey, I'm Matt Golson, and this is another Insane Budget Photography. So today we're talking about RAW files. And I've always believed, just basically because I read this, that RAW files made way, way better photographs than if you let your camera shoot in JPEGs. It makes sense because the RAW files are huge files, maybe 10 times larger than your JPEG, and it seems like there should be lots more information in there. I happened to come across an article the other day, and or a video or something, and a guy said that most people would never be able to tell the difference between their RAW files or their JPEGs, and they said they're just wasting time and space when they shoot in RAW. And so I was like, really? I didn't know that. That seems interesting. So, got my new Canon 1D Mark III that I've been using a lot here recently, and I thought today would be a good time to test that out cool function of the 1D Mark III is it can shoot on two memory cards at the same time. One can be shooting RAW files, the other can be shooting JPEGs, so that I get the exact same image, but uh, two versions of it, the RAW and the JPEG. So I just shot some stuff here around my front porch just to test it out. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so first thing I did was I took an image of the front of my house uh, and I purposely shot it at two stops underexposed just because I've always heard that with raw files the biggest benefit is a lot more exposure latitude to you know fix errors and stuff so um, this is a raw file I've used camera imported it with camera raw filter and as you can see it doesn't really look like it was wrongly exposed. The camera raw filter had no problems uh, correcting the two stop under exposure, and now it looks pretty good. Uh, I pushed the file as hard as I could, really trying to open up uh, as much detail in the sky and in the sh but retain detail in the shadows. So I was trying to get the most out of the information that I could. Now here is the JPEG. I recently discovered that if you go in Photoshop under filter you can use the camera raw file uh, raw filter on JPEGs I didn't know that it's not obvious because you think it would only work on raw files but it does a pretty good job on JPEGs and you can correct a lot of stuff in JPEGs so here's the file I tried to I set it side by side and I used the camera raw filter to try to make it look as close as possible to the original and you know they're similar but there's some pretty key differences and I, I could probably work on it some more but I don't really think it's necessary so it's pretty obvious when you start looking at it why raw is so much more superior whoever said that raw files was a waste of space is just plain wrong especially if you're the kind of person like me who might accidentally under or overexpose images frequently so check it out in my porch which was pitch black in the original exposure I have opened up tons of detail and you know there's a little bit of noise and stuff going on right here it's not super clean but it's pretty good and very very usable now let's go look at the JPEG lots and lots of noise lots and lots of noise much less sharpness uh, I wouldn't really like using this it's fine if nobody's gonna look really closely at it but you can tell the noise levels are way, way higher in these shadow areas where you had to try to, uh, you know, pull out detail that was just lost. Now, overall, the images, you know, if you're just looking at this maybe on Instagram, you weren't zooming in looking close, you may not really make out much of a difference. But if you pull back and really look closely, you can see quite a bit more pleasing tones like look at the shadow here underneath my uh, awnings nice shadows we go over here they just they kind of get blown out I, they're just not there it's like subtle tones subtle tones just kind of get lost a lot more contrast here in these bushes whereas here it's a little bit more subtle Let's zoom in look closely at this contrast area here in these bushes so this is the raw file and this is the JPEG. Not a big, big difference here. Pretty similar. Uh, in fact, it looks like I pulled more detail out of, on the bushes on the RAW file. 
Okay, one last comparison. The raw file at 100%, the JPEG at 100%, the raw file at 100%, the JPEG at 100%. You can tell it's pretty ugly compared to the raw file. So for my next image, I actually exposed it properly. I actually tried several more images under exposing them around two stops. And I just looked at the pictures. The results are almost all identical. Shadow areas look really bad. Uh, the overall image quality just seems a little bit messier and, and a little bit just just a little bit more contrasty, and and they just look more processed uh, compared to the raw files. So I thought, let me try one with proper exposure because generally I'm not over or underexposing that much. So here is a shot that I exposed, uh, you know, spot on. And then when I imported it, I, I used a little bit of camera raw filter, not a lot. I just tried to uh, mainly get some uh, more detail out here. This area was kind of blown out. There wasn't really anything but white there. So I tried to get a little bit more, more uh, information in this area. And I tried to lighten these bricks up just a little bit by uh, tweaking the shadows a little bit. Raise the contrast a tiny amount, but the exposure, I don't think I changed at all. So here's the JPEG. And I opened it in camera raw and tried side by side to the uh, raw file and just tried to tweak it in, in camera raw uh, to get that JPEG to look as closely as I could to the original raw file. And I think I got it looking pretty close. And so again, now proper exposure, it makes a huge difference. This JPEG looks almost identical to me to the original RAW file. But when you start looking closely, that's when you see the differences. So let's go in for 100% crop here. And we'll look at these brick areas. Love these nice little water droplets on the ivy. That looks great. So like, look at these nice smooth shadows and let's go over here and compare 100 percent on the jpeg uh not bad i mean i definitely would be fine with this image i would post this i would print it out i think it would look fine i don't think anybody's really probably going to tell the difference but you can see a difference it's a little noisier seems like it's a little less subtle uh definitely more processed looking so Here's the, JP, or here's the raw file again, nice, smooth, a little bit more information, a little bit less uh, noise, and it's not really very noisy anyway. And then here's the JPEG. Now here's an interesting area here. Look between these two leaves. This is just pitch black. There's almost nothing here, almost no information. We go back to the raw file. A little bit more information in there. You can kind of see some more subtle variations. Not much, but a little bit. You can see the veins on that leaf there. Um, how about in this deep, dark shadow area right through here around this brown leaf? Let's go back and compare it. Here's the JPEG in that area. Yeah, not great. Not bad. So ultimately, if you are shooting and you have your exposure pretty properly, it doesn't make as big a difference, but still, if we go back and compare the overall images, I still like the raw file better. There's the raw file again. It just has an overall more subtle, even though it's contrasty, even though it's got, uh, you know, I think pretty similar tones overall and values overall. Um, it just appears to me a lot, you know, a lot, a lot less processed and a lot more natural than this uh, <clears throat> JPEG image, which has kind of a overprocessed look in the shadow areas. So, if you're shooting JPEGs and if you are getting your exposure just right, spot on, then there's probably not a big reason to shoot raw. You can probably get away with it. But if you're going for the highest quality and if you want to be able to save an image that has some real intense dynamic range where you need to bring out the shadows and you need them to look good, you should shoot raw. Um, really guys, unless you 
are sh shooting a, a 5D uh, Mark S or whatever that has 50 megapixel images, you know, there's, for me, you know, I'm dealing with like 12 megabyte files with these cameras, um, 12 megapixel 1D Mark III. There's no reason for me not to shoot in RAW. Uh, the file sizes really aren't that overwhelmingly big. But if I was dealing with a much higher megapixel camera, then I might be a little less, um, uh, I might be a little bit reluctant to shoot in RAW because those are going to be some humongous files. All right, guys. Hey, I don't know if that was conclusive to you or not, but definitely if you're worried about your exposure, shoot in RAW. There's no real good reason not to.